service, and we hope you get uh, find something in the in what our pastor bring across today that you could go out there and share with others. And we're just happy to be here today. We, this is the last day of February that God has given us for Black History, and we just want to represent Him and just show Him how much we love Him. He brought us from a mighty, mighty long ways. He brought us from shackles on our feet, shackles on our neck. And that's a reason for us to be praising the God, because he is so worthy, and he is so good, and we just want to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you for bringing us from a mighty, mighty long way. And thank you for waking us up this morning in our right mind. Thanking us for making, allowing us to make, the, make it to church. Say, Lord, thank you for your traveling grace, and just thank you for being a good God, wonderful God, a merciful God. Thank you for being our in and out God. Thank you for being them in our times of trials and trouble and tribulations, Lord. You've just been so good, and we just want to show you how how good we we love you and praise you and thank you for all that you have done for us and all through all the way you have brought us, Lord. We got cars, we got homes. We're not out there on the streets, Lord Jesus. Thank pray, thank you. We're not in a hospital today. We're not in jail today. So you know God favored us today. And we're just here to give him praise and thanks for doing so much for us. For loving us when we didn't love ourselves. For praying for us when we didn't pray for ourselves. And that's just enough to say thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for giving us one more day to serve you, walk with you, talk with you, Lord Jesus. We are just so thankful for you. And I say all this in your precious name, Jesus. Amen.
gave us a little mother spank this morning. Amen. Amen. You can't get mad if, if this thing's not done. We don't, we want to go forward. We don't want to slip backwards. Hello, somebody. Y'all act like y'all ain't never had no mama to chastise you. Amen. When you didn't have your room cleaned up, your mama came in there and told you about it. Uh, she showed you about it. Then told you about it. <laughs> so, uh, 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 this is our church. Amen. Amen. I only got two claps out of that. Yeah. This is our church. 
Bishop brought us preach a message one time. Uh, carry your own corner. Amen. Amen. Carry your own corner. The man that was sick had four friends. And they heard Jesus was in the house. But the house was full. And couldn't get in through the window. And they couldn't get in through the door. And this is where Paul and Funkadelic got that song from. Take the roof off of the sucker. Y'all act like y'all ain't never heard Parliament Funkadelic. I know y'all. Yeah, yeah, I know it. Yeah, I know it. Yeah. And so they looked around and couldn't find a way in. And each one of them got a corner of it. They didn't leave him. That's the that's the beauty of the story. Yeah. They could have left him there and said, man, ain't no way we can get you in. But it was somebody creative in there that said, you know what, we gonna find a way. Now, what was interesting about the story to me is how did they know exactly where to put the man down? Because they put him right in front of Jesus while Jesus was teaching. And Jesus is looking, the roof is coming, you know, they're pulling all this stuff off of another man's house. Amen. But they were so concerned about their friend's well-being, they were willing to put him down through the roof. Amen. Right in front of Jesus. Yeah. And doing so, Jesus said, it ain't about you, your friend's faith yeah. that made you whole. Yeah. We all want to be whole. We all want God to bless us. But we got to carry our own corner. Oh, let's carry our own corner. Let's, let's, let's not leave it for one person to do. If we all become a collective team of one, we can get a lot more accomplished. Amen. 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 You, you know, we take things for granted. The church is clean. The pews have been cleaned off. The carpet has been vacuumed. And everybody comes in in a rush and leave in a rush. Amen. There are many times we ask, is there anything that I can do? That's right. Is there anything that I can do? Now, if they tell you no, nothing, then you got the right to go. But if they ask you to do something, please. Brother, please, sister, please be mindful in helping out. This is our church and we want to make sure that it is clean. God loves cleanliness. Hello, somebody. Amen. Like, Your house is clean. Isn't it? Yeah, I'm asking the question. I mean, I would, I would hate to go in somebody's bedroom and see, see a trail of clothes going all the way from the door to the. Amen. They ain't hang them up, they put them on the bed, and they just got one little space where they sleep. And clothes all around. Amen. Amen. Hey, we go into the bathroom and see all of your hair in the sink. Got quiet in there. Blessed quietness. Holy quietness. What assurance in my soul. On the stormy sea, Jesus speaks to me, and the billows seem to roll, roll on, roll, roll on, roll, and roll on, and roll. All right, y'all not happy this morning. I, I'm glad to be alive. I, I, I wish I would share this. I would share this with you. Uh, to give you just a little insight on how God speaks. This week I was looking at the news in the last month, beginning of the year, in the last year, uh, noticing all of these uh, fatalities of people crossing the street and getting hit, people just running through and don't even stop no more. Last night when I was coming in from work, I was at Crenshaw in Manchester, and all week long, the Lord had been speaking in my spirit, watch the cars, watch the cars, watch the cars. When I was walking over toward Rally Burger, a man just came and shot right in front of me and I had to, to, to juke it. And, you know, I'm too old to be juking, but I, <laughs> but, but whatever it was, I was saying, uh, I, I was saying like, that's all, feet don't fail me now. I need to, 
I need to be able to get out the way, you know, and, and he turned right in front of me as I slid to the side. I just looked at him like, man, I could have understood if it was other cars coming and he's just trying to make it, but the Crenshaw and Manchester for one time was clear. And I was just saying, you know, Lord, it's, it's good to listen to your spirit. The Bible said, watch and pray. So, uh, y'all, whatever y'all have going on in your life, whatever happened, let it go. Because God has given you another day and another opportunity to do it over again. So I've learned to thank God for the good things. You know, big things will take care of itself. All right. Let's prepare for our morning offering, our giving. Thank you so much for your giving, your consistency in giving and loving God to the point where you make your sacrifices. Uh, I hope that the ushers now have already given out the envelopes. Very good. Thank you. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise for our ushers. Thank God. Uh, let's give our musicians a hand this morning. some of the important uh, contributions we have, we are, and will continue to make in this country, regardless of how uh, much uh, disillusionment and disappointment uh, we are and have been the backbone of this nation, whether they like it or not. And you can always tell because they always want to be us, but they can't ever do what we do. Amen. You know, the truth of the matter. You know, uh, they called Elvis the king of rock and roll, but Elvis was a, was, was a person that stole a lot of his techniques from Chuck Berry. Uh, you know, uh, tomorrow uh, we will uh, have a memorial service. The city of Los Angeles have a memorial service uh, for Kobe Bryant, his daughter, and the seven victims. We have to learn how to appreciate talent. What Kobe Bryant did was God-given talent. One thing that I really appreciated was his mental fortitude and tenacity. And, and, and he was depicting, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Amen. You know, uh, uh, God gives gifts. All of us have gifts. It's what you do with what you have. And he took his gift to be what he was and what he had become from the perspective of sports and athletics. But it lets you know his mental fortitude that what the mind believes it can achieve and remember what all that he went through. Sometimes God, God has to allow certain things to happen so that we will know and understand that without God, we can do nothing. That's right. That's right. Amen. And, and he was asked by, I think it was a Ahmad Rashad, about uh, uh, his faith. And he said this one thing that I will never forget. He said, when you have a cross, 
too heavy to carry. And God carries you and the cross. That's when you know how strong your faith is. And there have been times, you remember the, 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 the poem Footprints in the Sand? When, when the person said, God, one of my most difficult and troublesome times came, we were walking, there was two sets of footprints, but then there was only one set of pr uh, prints in the sand, and that's what God said, that's when I was carrying you. So there are times when you can't see, because, again, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So there are times when you have gone through because God was carrying you and you thought that you was doing something on your own, no, God was there the whole time. And, 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 and brought you through. And so there's no time to say where were you. It's recognizing, thank you. Thank you for carrying me when I couldn't carry myself. Thank you for watching over me when I couldn't watch yes. for myself. Thank you for even loving me yes. when I didn't love myself. Come yes. on, I ain't the only one at times. Don't nobody love me. Don't nobody care nothing about me. Jesus said, I'm here. I'm, I'm here all the time. I'll, I'll never leave you. There's other folks who leave me, but I won't. So we thank God uh, for the contributions. Also remembering uh, those three uh, those young ladies that were killed there yeah. in Alabama yeah. at bombing at church. That's right. How wicked can you be that yeah. you can't even go to church and somebody yeah. has planted yeah. a bomb because of your hatred because yeah. somebody's color. Yeah. But yet, as the late Dr. Maya Angelou says, we rise. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> so we thank God today for each one of you being here on this morning on this uh, last Sunday of Black History Month that they gave us, but we know that we, we're history 365-24-7. So this morning we're going to have Bishop Frederick Darby deliver the morning message. Let's receive him by saying amen. Brother God for all of his many blessings. Amen. Amen. Thanking God for his love and his mercies divine. Just look at your neighbor and tell him, child, God is wonderful. Amen. God is just wonderful. Amen. Has he been wonderful to anybody more than you? Amen. And you just stop and think about his goodness and you just stop sometimes and just pay attention to what he has done. Amen. You just, you just, amen. Your mind can't but just go in reflection. Can I get a witness? Amen. It's just some stuff that we know that we couldn't think like ourselves through. Amen. There's some things that you knew you couldn't do nothing with, but amen. But you turned it over to Jesus. Can I get a witness? Then see when you give it to him, you gotta leave it alone. You gotta, you gotta literally leave it alone, go about your business, go your merry way. Cause if you gave it to him, he's more than the world against you. Can I get a witness? Amen. I like it. I like it to the fact that when you have gone through through uh, the drudgery, all that Satan tries to impact and put on your life, but when God brings you out. You, you know him in a different manner. You know him as a sweet savior. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Hallelujah. How many know that's real right there? That he took you through it, amen, and in spite of it, what the devil meant for bad, God made it for your good, amen? Yeah. And then you know him in a whole nother way, amen, because you know then how good and how sweet yeah. he really is to you, yeah. amen? Say the verse of that song, He's Sweet. I know that's 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 my song, amen. Because I done been through some stuff, child, that I know Fred couldn't get Fred through, amen. I done been through some situations that Darby couldn't get Darby out of. But God 
Somebody say God with me. But God, amen, he saw fit to step in, amen, he saw fit to redeem me, he saw fit to be able to pull me out, amen, out of the clutches of the enemy, amen. And now today I can reflect to the fact of saying he is sweet. Word 
that you have given us, that you have spoken to our hearts, that we have applied the mechanics to. Now, God, we pray, hallelujah, that you send the dynamics. Live, breathe, move upon this word, oh God, that it might be life-changing word to us as your people. Moreover, that it be a word that we can take from this place, that we can live this another week, oh God, free from sin, but moreover, given victory over the devil. We bless your name today. Hide us beneath your cross. Let your blood fluently flow upon us that we stand not in ourselves, but that we stand totally and completely in you. Bless your word now, spirit of the living God, fall fresh. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh. It's in Jesus' name. Precious name, we pray. Every heart in agreement with me with, with this prayer. Say amen. amen. Come on, say amen again. Amen. And say amen one more time. the response ain't the kind of response people will be looking for. Amen, amen. First of all, if you think I love you, why are you asking me? All right, all right. <laughs> if I love you. Yeah. Then when I'm answering you, I mean, then my love is predicated upon how I feel about you. Therefore, I don't need you to dictate to me how I'm answering you about how I love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you get that? Yes, sir. Cause you got some people that's you know they go on that they go on that twinge but if you if you if you love me show me just as much as I show you I need to tell you but I don't need you to tell me how either one. Amen. That's what I love about God's love. Amen. Amen. His love ain't don't need to be, his love ain't dictated. Can I get a witness? Amen. He, he don't need you to display to him or tell you how and how much to love you. Amen. He already did it. Can I get a witness? I said he already did it. Can I get a witness? How did he do it? Come here, John, chapter 3 and 16. For God, there it is. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Amen. So he done shown his for us. It's now our time to show ours for him. Amen. Oh, oh, amen. amen. That's where that was going. Amen. But we love God today. We are like our sister. If you can't come to church and have a good time, shame on you. Right. Amen. The last time I checked, my Bible tells me that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. Maybe that's why, maybe that's why, maybe that's why some folk look so weak when they come to church. They don't know nothing about that joy of the Lord. Amen. Because if you got his joy in you, amen, you sure enough ought to be strong within that strength, amen? Because it's him, not you. Somebody talk back to me. That ain't a nursery rhyme. The word says that the joy of the Lord is my strength, amen? And we serve a living Savior, amen? We serve a, a live God. He is not dead, amen? He's living, amen, and he's in heaven up above, amen? We give we give thanksgiving and glory to God, our Father, Jesus Christ, the Son, and the Blessed Holy Spirit, which is our keeper. Amen. Thanking him for all of his goodness and his mercies towards us. Amen. And for finding, finding uh, something in us good enough to call us for the purpose and for the task of being a servant to him. Amen. Amen. God ain't had to call you. Amen. Amen. He didn't have to pick you, amen, amen, for his service. But if he did, amen, that's because he saw something in you, amen, amen, that he wanted to use for his glory and for his honor. To my brother, let's give our brother, my brother, my brother, my brother, our overseer. Let's just love him again real quick. Amen. Come on, that's right, that's right. Amen. Thank God. Thank God for my brother. This is truly a brother. Uh, indeed to me and, and I love it I love it I love him we are a brother and I say
Bishop used to laugh at this one. He gonna get that, he gonna laugh too. Uh, I used to say a lot of times when we were at church, boy, I love you, boy. Love you too, boy. Love you, man. Love you too, man. I said, but not in a fagadocious way. <laughs> and boy, they would laugh, they would laugh, but I'm gonna give you a word, I'm gonna give you one, amen. And he said, man, where you get that from? That is, like, said, that is a dictionary. I said, yes, it is. And we continued on, but I love him, amen. And definitely, amen, it goes without saying. Anybody that knows me and anybody that knows him know that we have love, love true love, real brotherhood, one for another, amen. amen. And that's the way it's supposed to be, isn't that right? Amen. amen. Thank God again for, amen, for my, 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 my rib with me, amen. My rib is with me today, amen. I say amen. For the rib, amen. I got the rib with me, thanking God for it. And I got, I got the right rib now. You know, you can have the wrong rib. You can have the wrong thing sometimes, amen. I am a witness. But when you get the right one, amen, the one that he designed for you, you can make it a little further. Someone say praise God. Amen, amen. Two, amen. To a, that is right there, amen. You got the right one, baby. Oh, yeah, that's it. But amen, it's a, it's a beautiful thing when you got the right one, amen. Bless God. To our, amen, to all of our leadership, amen, that make <clears throat> the council, the working entities of this wonderful, this magnanimous, this beautiful church, this wonderful church, amen. To Mama, let's say amen for Mama today, amen. Mama, amen. Yeah, let's say amen for mama. I'll give one more time. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Because mama got to get you sometime. And that's what makes a mama. Amen. Amen. Sometimes, you know, it, it doesn't take the love or, the, or, the, or nothing away, but sometimes you got to get talked to. Amen. I said sometimes you got to get talked to. Amen. Now here it go. If you don't want to get, if you don't want to get talked to, don't do nothing that's prone to get you talked to. That's it right there. Now leave it right there. Amen. But that's just the way that goes. Can I get a witness? Right. Amen. But two, I my our wonderful mother Maddie. We love her to, uh, uh, entirely. We thank God for her labor. Amen. For her labor of love that works consensually even with this this work. Amen. And to all of you, my brothers and sisters. Amen. In the kingdom building, amen. Men, women, boys and girls, flies, gnats, or whatever they may be on the walls or in the lights, amen. We greet you today in divine love, amen. Not in ourselves, but we greet you today in divine love, amen. That's the love of the Father. Can I get a witness? Amen. 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 Thanking God again for all of his many, many, many wonderful blessings. I ain't going to be with you long. I promise you. Watch this. Amen. Uh, it ain't going to be long at all. Amen. I'm reminded my father used to tell me when I first started preaching, son, uh, two things. A good message ought not be long. Amen. And a bad one sure shouldn't be. Amen. amen. Bless amen. God. Amen. And thus far, amen, I might have had a few flunker bills in my early, early stages. Amen. But I sure enough ain't got no reason to be flunking now. Amen. 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 So with the interest of your prayers, we'll quickly just jump on this text. And we'll be back on our way on up out of here. Meet me in the book of Romans. Romans chapter 6. Brother Paul, we know him to be infamous as the apostle that took the word of God to the regions. His three missionary in some regards, some say four, but ultimately we know factually three missionary journeys. And he went out there to Asia and Mesopotamia and all the other regions, amen, outside of the realms of Palestine and Judea, Jerusalem. And he took the word to the folk that didn't have it, amen? Amen. Amen. That's why Jesus could, could declare that. Amen. I have sheep that are not of this fold. Amen. Romans chapter 6. 
verse number one. I'm going to read verse one, and I'm going to hop down to seven, eight, nine, and ten. Everyone have it? The word reads this way. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? I'm going to do two. God forbid, how shall we? That are dead to sin live any longer therein. Hopscotch would be the seven. For he that is dead is free, watch this, free from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth, watch this, no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive, say alive, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign, say reign, reign. in your mortal body that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as in instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves, say yield yourselves, yield yourselves, yield yourselves unto God as though that are alive from the dead and your members instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you for ye are not under the law but under grace. Let's say amen. amen. Come on, let's say amen one more time. Amen. For the reading and hearing of God's precious and holy word. God bless you so much. Thank you for your audience and respect to the word of God. I appreciate it. Amen. I often give a tagging accolade to perspective when I God gives me opportunity to stand to declare his word. <clears throat> Amen. If God be God, then serve God. Before one jot or one tittle of this word passes away, heaven and earth shall pass away. But the word of our God shall stand forever. All right. And if you believe that with me, let's just give God a wave offer and say even this day. Amen. Even this day. Amen. We just shared these two verses we read and hearing. Uh, just look at somebody and, and say these words to them. Uh, tell them self, self. self. and sin. And sin. Get your mind right. Self. And sin. Get your mind right. Amen. It's a slogan that is suggested in our nowadays and times, some decades further ago than now. We can recall one of the establishing works of the, for us as the black people, the, um, the network of the NAACP, our, our wonderful overseer can relate because he has works with the NAN network he works with and is a part of and those connecting facilities such as um, the NAACP. But it said they have a slogan, if, if you, you might remember, they had a slogan that was spoken on in their behalf and the slogan said simply, that a mind is a terrible thing to waste. And I loved, growing up, I heard that 
that, that salutation, but as I got older and heard it more so over and over, I reflect in my own mind as a young man, young black man, because again, it was a black, amen, it was a black working entity that spoke and declared and made such a, 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 a saying, a, a perspective to be reflected upon in the lives of young black people. Amen. Young black children, young black young men and women, us as a race of people. And suggestively, that simple, very simple thought, it was simple, but it had such dynamic perspective, if you will. Can I get a witness? The suggestion, the suggestion of the fact that a mind is a terrible thing to waste. And how much so is that true today? That the mind is a terrible thing to waste. Let me hop over in the scripture and parenthetically click, uh, link that to another perspective. When Moses was uh, in his perspective of getting done with his tour of duty with the people of God, the children of Israel, Amen. And Joshua was, was being uh, more or less um, kind of installed as the successor to him. And God told Moses to bring the people of God together in this time. And, and he was talking to them, giving them the, the perspectives of what was going to take place and what was going to go on and so forth as, as God would take him home and take him on from relief of his duty and his servitude. But amen, in that same time and perspective, there was a, another cliche that was spoken uh, in that time when Moses was in his exodus and Joshua was on his way in. He said, as for me and my house, he said, we will, not might, not maybe, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And I like that perspective and in linking so because if the fact of as the NAACP can suggest that we as the black people and as a black race and as powerful and as prolific as we are and have been in time and perspective and decades beyond now before it superseded us, preceded us, that they did so many great and wonderful and establishing remarkable uh, um, things, uh, uh, inventions and, and uh, 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 all type of wonderful perspectives that we even nowadays can enjoy all because the, the wisdom of a black man made it so. He didn't suggest allow his mind to be one of those that was a waste but moreover, one that was excelled and excelled itself, just as L.C. was talking about Brother Kobe, man, did not allow his mind to be a terrible thing, yeah, yeah. to be wasted. But then, I like in the fact, again, with that salutation, as uh, uh, Joshua spoke to a man to the children of Israel, he said, he, said, uh, he told him, ask for me in my house, we going to serve the Lord. Now, now, you can do whatever you want to do. You, you have long since Moses has been the, the, the servant and leading us and, and taking us through this, this um, desert as God has allowed him to take us. Bless God. You have had all, you have had all the opportunity in the world to do what? Get your mind right. Stay with me. I'm going to show you. I'm, I'm linking it for you. You have saw before even be before God even allowed Moses to take us, we saw a whole lot of stuff that God did just in order to set us free. Can I get a witness? I mean, if anybody had opportunity and forward knowledge, clear cut understanding to the fact that God is a great God. The nation of Israel did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They saw God do the, the unimaginable. Right. They amen. saw God. Can I get a witness? Amen. Right. amen. They saw God do the wondrous, the impossible. They saw God do things never heard of, thought of, spoke of, reflected upon, but yet they still had a perspective that allowed them not to have 
their right mind. Amen. Amen. Self and sin is a perspective that all of us as people of God, lovers of God, believers of God, Christians, if you will, self and sin is a perspective that all of us must, say must, must. deal with. Why do you mean that, bitch? How can you say that? That seems a bit judgmental. No, it does not. David suggests in the Psalms, he said, it was in sin that I was conceived in my mother's womb. He goes on for to say, Brother Paul say here in Romans, he said, oh, wretched man, that I am. He spoke for himself because he knew in me is no good thing. Can I get a witness? But the perspective of knowing that there is no good thing in me, but here's the reality. Here's the self-check, self and sin. I do know this one thing, that within my life, within my heart, within my mind, yes, as Paul said, there is no good thing. I, I, I'm, I'm wretched, I'm evil, I, 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 I don't do right when I could do right. Paul, David, I mean, Paul went all the way further again, so he said, he said, what I would, do good, Mama B. Evil is always present. Suggesting what? Bless God. Now I'm almost done. Watch this. Self and sin is a perspective. Why? Because you cannot be a Christian and suggest that you ain't knowing nothing about sin. Self and sin is indicative. They work along. They actually parallel one another. Yes. Yeah, there you go. Here we go. Watch this. If you don't know no sin, then 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 how can you say he died for you? That's right. That's right. All right. That's right. If you ain't got no sin, you ain't done no sin, then how can you say that he died for you? Right. Because who did he die for? He died for those that were lost. Yeah. Can I get a witness? He died. Say it again, Josh. He died for those that were lost. He died for those that knew they needed a savior. Can I get a witness? He died for the whole world. Why? Because the whole world was found in sin. The whole world was nobody righteous. Let me remind, let me go back to, to what overseer priest last month for four weeks. Amen. Talking about, amen, uh, 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 the, uh, the don't look back. The fact, the simple fact, the simple fact, when God delivers you, when God delivers you, I'm saying one time when God delivers you, you have nothing to look back for. Right. Yeah. Self and sin though, somebody say self and sin. Yeah. Self and sin is that thing that made her look back. Yes. Right. Yes. She wasn't right. What do we mean, Bishop? She was not ready to turn loose. She wasn't ready to let go. She wasn't ready to release. She wasn't ready to leave it alone. She had Get one more glimpse. Yep. The spiritual song says, "Only a look at Jesus." Why? So because He satisfies your needs, He will supply. Self and sin is indicative, people of God. Why? And the sad, the sad indictment is that Satan nowadays he don't want us to talk about. Sin. Yeah, yeah. He wants us to, he wants us to, you know, this is a representation of sin and we the Christian. He don't want us as Christians to, to put this on out, out front. Let it be ready now because we got it. I said we got it. Yeah, we got it. Oh, we got it. Yeah. All of us have some measure or some perspective of sin in our life. Yeah. There is, come on Paul, let's talk to him There is none righteous No, not one I'm just talking to you, I'm just talking to you Bringing out some facts that sometimes Satan wants us to, to leave out Sometimes he wants us to, you know, hide it under the cover What not, don't bring it out oh, and One more time uh, uh, What you tell him, what you tell him, Paul All have sin And come short Not just sin, but have sin Of the glory of God. Come on, God, let's wrap this up. The fact of being sinful relates to the fact of the why you got Christ in your life. Because he came for the lost. Can I get a witness? He died that you might be free. He gave his life so that you would not have to give yours. Oh, am I talking to 
to nobody. I said he died that he could save you. Yeah. He died and took the sin. He came and paid the debt for the sin that was yours to pay. Yeah. That's why he said I have come. John 10.10. 10. He said I have come yes. that they might have life. Yes. Yes. And that they might have it more abundantly. Can I get a witness this morning? That's why he said, John 10, 10, one more time. He said, I have come that they might have life. Let's wrap this up and sin thing up. If you know that it was because of your sin, Josh, have 